Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. We're going to look at some examples of giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, as well as a mimic, and I'll highlight key teaching points throughout. This patient presented with a mass of the proximal ventral thumb, so the palmar aspect of the thumb, and we're oriented so that the flexor pollicis longus tendon here, which is the main flexor tendon of the thumb, is oriented in long axis. You can see that's surrounded by a muscle. Anteriorly, that's the superficial head of the flexor pollicis brevis muscle. Posteriorly, that's the deep head of the brevis muscle. And when you notice that the distal aspect of the tendon, there's this partially imaged hypochoic solid appearing mass. So let's move the transducer down a bit more distally. In that same orientation, we can see the flexor pollicis longus tendon here. There's the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And overlying the tendon, we see this lobular hypochoic solid appearing mass. If we turn short axis on the mass, we can see that it's again lobular, partially encasing that flexor pollicis longus tendon sheath as it overlies the proximal phalanx. Whenever you have a mass abutting a tendon, you want to evaluate dynamically to see how that impacts tendon movement. So here we're having the patient flex the thumb. You can see that the tendon is gliding smoothly between the mass and that proximal phalanx, but the mass is not moving with the flexion. It seems separate from the actual tendon. Let's add color Doppler and note that there is increased vascular flow within the mass, confirming that it is indeed a solid mass. We can further bring that out by adding MV flow, which is a form of microvascular flow imaging that detects slow flow in small caliber vessels. So it's a great way to bring out the vascular characteristics. So we have a solid vascular mass. At surgery, this proved to be a giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath. So these are also known as tenosynovial giant cell tumors or even localized nodular tenosynovitis. And they represent the second most common mass of the hand and wrist after the ganglion cyst. They occur most commonly at the volar aspect of the first three digits, so the thumb, index finger, and middle finger. But we can also see them at the hand, wrist, ankle, foot, and knee. They're usually homogeneously hypoechoic with well-defined lobulated margins. And they'll be closely associated with the tendon but will not move with tendon movement because they arise from the sheath, not the tendon itself. They may also show posterior acoustic enhancement, as in this case, we see these bright echoes posterior to the mass, this increase through transmission. That's something that may make you initially think, could this be a complex cyst? But the presence of internal vascular flow will allow you to confidently diagnose this as a solid mass. Let's look at another example of a giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath. This patient also presented with a ventral thumb mass. This one is a bit more distal, still overlying the proximal phalanx, but notice it's insinuated deep to the flexor pollicis longus tendon. When we turn on long axis, you can see that relationship a bit better. There's the tendon, there's the underlying mass there between the tendon and the proximal phalanx. Initially, you may wonder, could this be a cyst? It appears fairly hypochoic to almost anechoic. When we adjust the grayscale, it appears a bit more solid. But again, add color Doppler and you'll see internal vascular flow confirming that this is a solid mass, which again, we can bring out with this MV flow, microvascular flow imaging. Note that robust vascularity. And this turned out to be another giant cell tumor. So these tumors are usually benign. They can be locally aggressive and very rarely malignant. The treatment is typically surgical resection. All right, let's look at a companion case. So this is a patient that presented with a mass at the radial aspect of the palm. So again, we're on the ventral aspect. And we see this hypochoic solid appearing mass with lobulated margins. There's the underlying hand and thenar musculature. When we adjust our transducer, we can see that the posterior aspect of the mass does abut a flexor tendon. This was the flexor digitorum tendon leading out to the index finger. And also in that same plane, when we turn slightly off axis, we can see that it also abuts this thin hypochoic curvilinear structure, which is a median nerve branch headed out to the index finger. So as in the previous case, we want to evaluate what's the relationship with this structure and the underlying tendon and neurovascular structures. When we evaluate this with real-time imaging, here we're having the patient flex their second finger. Notice that the mass abuts the flexor tendon here, right there, but does not significantly move with the tendon. There's also some mild mass effect against that median nerve branch. When we zoom in, we can see the lobular margins of this mass quite well. We want to evaluate again for internal vascularity. Here we're using directional power Doppler showing diffuse vascular flow, confirming that this is indeed a solid mass. And again, when we add MV flow, that microvascularity really is brought out. So even though this appears like another giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath at surgery, it was actually a fibroma of the tendon sheath. 
So compared to Tino's synovial giant cell tumor, these will have a similar ultrasound appearance and occur in similar locations, so you do want to include it in your differential diagnosis for a giant cell tumor. However, they're much less common. And these are benign. Malignancy has not been described with these lesions. Treatment tends to be surgical excision. And what's this structure here? We're looking again at that median nerve branch of the index finger, this time in short axis. And just a reminder that whenever you're evaluating a cystic or solid mass adjacent to tendinous or neural structures, the relationship is important to mention for surgical planning, and it may explain any nerve-related symptoms the patient may be having. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button to see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week. Follow us on social media, links are in the show notes, or click the YouTube Posts tab. Until next time, radiology is life.